my whole life was fighting. I used to love to fight. You right. Know? I'm a short guy, you know, and I used to love taking on bigger guys because it was like, all right, cool. And if I lost, hey, he was bigger than me. You know what I mean? Right, right. Which didn't happen too often. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I became a nut. Um, so, okay, so. I, so I had a three-year sentence in that last one, but go ahead. Yeah, um, so that's what I wanted to get to. So, because <clears throat> your, your amazing Transformation and testimonies as 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 what I want to get to too because it's so powerful. So, yeah. so <clears throat> maybe really quick, what was your what was your absolute bottom that got you to be like, okay, I'm really going to reach out to Christ, and then go from okay. from there because because that, that's that's the part that I yeah. think that people really want to hear too. So my bottom, I call it Tina. Mm. It was my wife. Okay. So my second wife, first wife, that marriage lasted six months. You know, and I had a daughter from that. She's now 33 years old. Um, I got custody of her when she was 11. And uh, I met my wife now, Tina. And um, at that time, I was selling a lot of drugs. I was selling 30 pounds of weed a month. Mm. Um, doing pretty good. I was a tattoo artist. became a tattoo artist. Uh, I was doing a lot of Giants players. And so I was making good money. Uh, only problem with me was I had a bad ex- uh, example of a husband Mm. Watching my dad used to beat up my mom a lot, too. That was another thing. There was a lot of violence in my house. Brother, sister, everybody fighting all the time. And um, so I treated my wife pretty bad. You know, mm. she was young. She was 20. I was 35. You know, and uh, people always tell me, ooh, that's kind of rocking the boat. Well, my wife changed me, and she'll tell you that. But uh, we ended up getting... I, I know Tina, and I know yeah. she... I, yes, I, I can <laughs> I can test to that. So anyway, so we got together, and uh, she became my slave. Pretty much, you know, she did whatever I told her. Um, I didn't even give her a key to the house. I was so jealous and I was so uh, controlling. She didn't have a key. She couldn't leave without me. She couldn't go anywhere without me. I stopped her from seeing her family. Uh, she wanted to go see her family in Modesto. I'm like, no, you know, we're gonna do this. I was pretty. I was pretty mean to her. Uh, we get violence, screaming. My daughter saw it all. It was pretty sad. My daughter used to watch me dealing the drugs. We'd be sitting there smoking pot, drinking, whatever. She'd be right there. Uh, I thank God that she didn't get into it, you know, at least the marijuana thing. <clears throat> but um, I think we were together for about almost five years. And one day uh, we got in a big fight, and here's my bottom. You know, she went to work and never came back. And by then, you know, I, w- I would always take her to work because she didn't drive. She just goes, I'm going to walk. And it wasn't that far away. It was probably a quarter of a mile. I said, yeah, go ahead, you know, whatever. So then she never came home. And that was my bottom. You know, it was like, okay, okay, where'd she go? So I went down to her work and talked to her manager. Hey, is my wife here? And I go, no, she's not. No. So me being a, a seven strike felon, <laughs> seven strikes on my record. Yeah. yeah. Um, I went to the police department, let them know what happened. And I said, look, if anything happens to her, I want to make sure that you know it's not me. You know, so then they went and talked to her boss, found out that she was okay. She had, and some lady had took her home, a Spanish lady. And, uh, they said she wants to come home and get a few of her things, just some clothes. And I said, that's fine. So they brought her there. She took it. And I was kind of happy. I was like, okay, I'm free again. It's party time. You know, and I had friends come over and we'd party. And that went on for just a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. And right away, I started thinking, okay, I kind of miss her. <laughs> and um, I found out that she became a Christian. That lady was a Christian. She took my, uh, my wife to a Spanish church in San Francisco down off uh, 24th and Metro. And um, I was like, when I heard about it, I'm like, how could she, she didn't even understand Spanish. <laughs> she never talked about God ever, you know. And um, I said, I'm going to check into this Christian thing, you know. So I went on the internet and I'm starting to look. And the first thing I see is this guy named Jose from a singles thing, you know, like a dating thing. My name's Jose. I'm a Christian in San Jose. And I'm like, yeah, she's probably with him, you know. And my daughter used to watch me and she'd go, dad, get away from that. Get away from that. Don't, don't start, you know. And I, cause I would, I would get furious. And uh, that's where it all started. And uh, one day, I was so depressed that I sat there. It was probably 7.30 in the morning, maybe. And I had my front door open with the screen door shut. And I lived right in the cemeteries in Coma. And uh, I'm already drinking, and I'm snorting, and I'm smoking, and I'm partying. And I'm just trying to just get rid of the depression, you know? And I think that's what most people do drugs, to get rid of the depression, not realizing that it's going to get you more depressed later. Um, that, that was truly my bottom. And... A friend of mine came over that day that had never, ever been to my house. You know, I was actually, I was in the saltwater tanks, fish tanks. So I tattooed a few of his guys in the shop and they gave me free stuff as trade. <clears throat> but I always went there, here at San Mateo. And 
he showed up one day and he walks in the house and he sees all my house is a wreck because I was so mad I was breaking things and everything. And he goes, what happened? And I told him and I said, yeah, I looked at this Christian thing, but I don't know, man. I'm, I'm wondering what's going on with my wife. And he's all like, he goes, you know. And then there was actually a site that I went to and it said, if you text, if you give us your email, we'll pray for you. So I did that, but they never answered me. I thought they were phonies. So then I told him about that and he said, well, here's a phone number. You call it. You know, my mom goes to this church in San Bruno. It's called Church of the Highlands. And they have a great pastor there. He's a really neat guy, you know. And I said, yeah, just put it there. You know what I mean? And, you know, and the next day I remember calling and I talked to this girl on the phone and she actually prayed for me, mm. which, which kind of touched me, you know. I mean, this girl doesn't even know me. You know what I mean? Sure. And she goes, well, I want to pray for you. And then I asked to speak to the, to the I thought it was a priest back then. <laughs> so who's your priest, you know? And they go, well, we have a pastor, but he's, he's not here. He won't be back till Friday. I still remember. That was on a Tuesday. I still remember. And um, I, she goes, but we have other elders and pastors. And I said, well, I want to speak to the main guy. I don't want to speak to the in-betweeners, you know? And uh, sure enough, she set me up for that Friday. And that was the day I walked in and met Pastor Donald Sheely. And uh, we walked in a room, and I'm looking around, and I'm going, wow, this place is weird. I still I remember I had a big old fat joint rolled in my car, and I wanted to take a couple of hits before I went in because my nerves were kind of going to church. Uh. But then I thought, okay, if I'm going to do this, I'm going to have respect for God. I, I, I've always heard of God. I didn't know exactly who he was. Sure. I uh, walked in, met with him. We talked for a little bit. And um, three hours later, after praying for me and talking to me, he said something that I'll never forget. He said, I bet, you, I bet you your whole life you wish you could start over again. And I went, I've said that many times. Actually got angry at God, even though I didn't know who he was. Like, why'd you put me in this family? You know, why don't you put me with a better family? Why don't you put me in a better neighborhood? How can I be like these rich kids that are growing up with, you know, nice homes and pools and sure. everything else? So, sure. <clears throat> so he, um, when he said that, it really hit me. And I said, yeah. And he said, today, your slate can be wiped clean. So right away in my worldly way of thinking, I'm thinking, oh, my whole record's going to be quite clean, the police department, everything, yeah. And he goes, no. He goes, your slate will be wiped clean with God. I said, that, that'll work. I, I, I need a lot of forgiveness right now. Um, hurt a lot of people in my life, and uh, some of them still hit me. But uh, <clears throat> I got on my knees that day, May 22nd, 2004, 3 o'clock. I remember looking at the clock, and I gave my life to Jesus. Now, at that time, I was drinking two-fifths of liquor a night, uh, smoking a quarter ounce of weed a day, probably 100 bucks worth a day, maybe a little bit more, and other stuff. Couldn't quit for the life of me. Tried, tried many times. My daughter used to cry when I told her I was going to quit because, and I go, why are you crying? She goes, because you get violent. Mm. And uh, that day, I walked out of the church, and I don't know what happened. It just, it was gone. There was no more urges for pot. There was no more urges for drinking. There was more, no urge for anything. So you didn't need that joint in your car anymore? No, when I left Highlands, I went down the street, made a right turn, ripped it up, threw it out the window. I had six pounds of weed sitting in my house still at that point. That's awesome. And I had dark curtains in my house. I went mm -hmm. home. My daughter thought I was losing my mind. I walked in. I started ripping all the curtains down. I went to the store, bought flowery curtains. Don't ask me why. <laughs> and uh, I called all my customers because I still had to pay for the pot. I couldn't give it back to the dealers. They didn't want it back. So I, I said, today and tomorrow, wholesale, my price. People came, bought it all from me, got rid of it all. Got rid of all my paraphernalia, gave it away, and from that day forward, I've been clean ever since, without even a struggle. And and wow. I and from that point, that's when I knew, I knew God was real. 